So we just had a, an issue with an ABB drive. ABB drives typically are super friendly, user friendly. I like them. And what you normally find is your start stop command on DI1. It's going to be a dry contact. So you have the top terminal is 24 volt DC. It goes out to a dry contact relay for start stop and comes back on DI1. And then you'll have another two wires that are typically landed on AI1 or AI2. That's your analog input for your speed. So your speed command up top, your start stop there, and then your safeties can be wired into the, the other digital inputs. These are run enable terminals. So what was weird about the one we just had to deal with was these have COM cards in them. And this is the first time I've ever had to deal with an ABB drive that has a COM card in it. So this is RS45, like Modbus. So it gets all of its start stop and speed commands through the network instead of through the analog input. So what we did was we moved these two wires up to the analog input so we could send a zero to 10 volt signal. Now you also wanna be sure that the dip switch is set to 10 volts. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that because we gotta do this one next. Uh, the U is really kind of like a V. That means voltage and I means current. But then we had to go into the menus and we had to find the parameters that applied. So I found the field bus, but no matter what we did, we could not get it to stop paying attention to its comm card. So what I ended up doing was I went to assistance, I went to application, I believe, and I switched it to HVAC default. So supply fan seems like a pretty good one, right? Because that's what it's actually controlling. That one was not useful. HVAC default uh, ended up being the one that we wanted to use. If you are setting up a drive for the first time, you need to get the, the information off of the motor data plate. So you're gonna need to know horsepower and voltage and RPM that's all listed on the data plate. And you're gonna to wanna to know the input voltage as well. So you can take your meter and uh, meter the, the disconnect and see like this one, for instance, is uh, 208. And all of that gets input in the parameters when you commission the drive. So you can go to assistance and you can go to commission the drive and it will walk you through and it'll ask you the questions about the voltage of the motor and um, the horsepower and the RPMs. Put all that in. Uh, it'll ask you if you want to use, be able to use the hand button or if you want an external hand function. So it's all there. It's pretty easy. And uh, HVAC default is the application that you want. So we go into commission the drive. So here it is 208 volt. The current that it runs at, nominal current. Nominal frequency, 60 hertz, that's very normal. There's your RPM, horsepower. So that's the application. We're gonna end up changing that whenever we put our stuff on, HVAC default. But for now, we're gonna leave it alone until we get our controller on it. And so this one here, do you want the mechanical handoff auto switch? No. And you can go through reference setup. So your reference AI1 is your speed command. So that's great. Let's have that set up. Mm, I typically don't put a minimum on the AI input. You want to do it later on motor speed. So this would go to zero. Max is good. Minimum reference. Again, we're gonna leave that at zero. And later we will go into the, the speed control and uh, change it to minimum of 20 Hertz. So you run through all that, continue, stop, start, stop, set up, yep. So, so this one still is set up as BACnet on the, well, not BACnet, but it's it's on the COM card. So um, the start-stop command is not 
on DI1 like it's supposed to be, right? So when you're running through it, you're going to want to use DI1. And it gives you some stuff that you don't necessarily need to know about, but you can read up on scalar flying start if you really want. Lots of stuff here that the default is just good enough. So constant speed setup, we're not going to use that. PID control, not fancy enough to use that. So it's, it's, the PID stuff's built into our own controller. Low noise, we don't care. Display, let's see what's in display. So it's going to display the output frequency on the panel, that's nice. Yeah, and then you can change the application there at any time. You can go in, so these are the menus that you just went through, the references, the start stop control, protections, constant speed stuff. So it's all there, broken out if you need it. Piece of cake. So 99 times out of 100, you're just gonna walk up on it and you're gonna find your start stop on DI1 and you're gonna find your speed wires on AI1 and you're not gonna have to mess with the uh, commissioning, you know, the configuration of the, the motor amperage and the motor um, RPMs and all of that stuff, voltage and everything. You're not gonna have to commission the drive 99 times out of 100. Um, but there will be times when AI1, like this is kind of a common one, if, if AI1 is set to four to 20 milliamps on the old EMS controller and um, our new controller, we always typically use um, zero to 10 volt. So the switches to configure that are here. And um, you may end up having to, it's sometimes it's nice to configure the display to show what you want. So that can all be found in the menus. But for the most part, you don't have to mess with them. But if you ever do, just try to commission the drive and use HVAC default as your application. And then if you get, you know, if you don't have these jumpers, um, you may have to use some jumpers and make sure that your safeties are tied in where they're supposed to be. You know, if you have wires coming in for your safeties for, say, like smoke detector or something, make sure those stay in. Um, they may be tied in with the fan start stop, and that also works. But if you're getting an error code for um, run enable missing, something like that, it's going to be because you don't have these jumpers in place.